In this particular application, we have uh, quite a distance from our machine. So in those cases, we have to actually attach two pieces of mylar ducting together. How we accomplish that is what you're going to want to do is you want to pull your two pieces of mylar ducting together. You want to hold them tightly. You want to take your metal clamp and you want to clamp them on the side. It's, it's kind of important that you do it on the side. You're going to want to do the very same thing on the opposite side. What you want to do is find your joint and you want to clamp it together. So now what you've done is you've extended your ductwork. What else you're going to end up having is you're going to have some slack in the hose as you can see right here. What's going to happen when you turn the fan on is that hose is going to want to move. So the best thing to do to remedy that situation would be also to take your clamps as we did earlier and you want to pull this excess ducting together and you want to clamp it. What that's going to do is give you a straighter run with the duct but it also takes the slack out and allows better airflow to the target area. Now we're going to do the same thing we did there on the other side. You're going to come in here, you're going to find this excess duct that you have here, you're going to pinch that together and you're going to clamp it. So now what you've done is you've created a straight run of duct work that has no gaps, no air brakes, no way for the ducting to move around Everything's good and tight from the machine back. Now the next step in the process is to actually start the machine and get the treatment going. Okay, there's no, no one correct way to lay out your heat treatment strategy. We have techniques that we would use. So Tom, my director of technical services, and I have, can vary treatment strategies depending on what we're treating, how long we have, and those sorts of things. I typically like to start in the furthest room, hopefully it's a bedroom. 90 to 93 percent of your infestation is going to be in bed, box springs, comforter over the bed, pillows, headboards, and couches or oversized chairs. So why not start heating in that primary area where the bed bugs are probably habitating. Okay, so we're going to start in the furthest bedroom. In this particular structure, that is upstairs in the master bedroom. So we're going to start there. If we didn't start there, we could employ another strategy where we just brought it in here and open windows up there in the upstairs rooms and draw some of the heat up there and circulate with fans. After I do that master bedroom, I'm going to go to bedroom number two, and I'm going to heat that for about 30 minutes at high heat, and then I'm going to go to bedroom number three and heat that at high heat. The only place where the air is going to be released is through this door. Therefore, as this air fills this house, this treatment air, we're going to capture some of it with fans blowing it into these other rooms while we're focusing on that one single room. And those rooms will go from ambient temperatures, let's say in the 60s or 70s, on up into the hundreds before we start focusing on those rooms. One of our treatment strategies, whether for electric or Titan, is to use the existing heating system. If it's forced air, you can turn it on and preheat. If you go from 60 to 80 degrees in there, you've saved yourself, uh, with electrics, you've saved yourself uh, at least one hour of treatment time. Uh, on the Titan, it is not as important, but this could work during the direct fire Titan treatment to continue to circulate air. Air coming out of your forced air heating system is about 118 to 120 degrees even though the thermostat set at 90. Now, if you want to have it run during the treatment, you either got to disengage the thermostat with the heater on, or you need to cover it with some Reflectix uh, insulated material, and maybe a baggie with blue ice and staple it to the wall to keep it cool so it will continue, and then tape around this 
to keep it in a cool zone so that your heater is running during your treatment. That's with electric or that's with direct fire Titan heaters, our E-Pros or our electric, uh, our Titan heater. So this is just a technique that can shorten treatment time. If you can get the occupant of the structure to preheat, then you're a step ahead. Many times tenants aren't going to do much preparation. We all know that. And many times there's a lot of clutter in their structures. These things will extend our treatment time, but we have to deal with them. Well, we're not in the business of heating up a room as much as we are displacing the air that's in the room and replacing it with positively charged heated air from the Titan. So by preheating the room, what we achieve is we increase that ambient temperature, which overall is going to increase the ambient temperature and make the treatment time less than in a lot of cases, but also it allows you to not have to use as many fans and not have to use as many other ways to circulate the air because you've preheated the room. Um, every situation is different. Every situation, every structure is going to be different. The, the best methodology that I found, would, would, I align a lot with Dr. Linford in the fact that farther away, back to the machine always seems to work better because the farther away you are from the machine, the more it takes to get the heat there. So if you can get those rooms preheated and work your way back to the equipment, it's less taxing on the equipment and it's also a much more efficient and effective way to do the treatment.